This video, we will talk about geometric sequences and series. So we talked about the first type of sequence, which was arithmetic sequences. And arithmetic sequences were about addition and subtraction. Now we're going to talk about geometric. So geometric sequences. So these guys, you want to multiply and divide. Uh, you have a constant multiple that's either multiplication or division. So for example, uh, when you have... Um, let's say um, 3, 6, 12, 24, 48 continues, you can see that in this particular problem, in order for me to get to the next one, I would have to multiply by a factor of 2. So you can see here by times 2, times 2, times 2. So here you have a multiplication. You have something called a common ratio. Okay, so that's basically the common number that you're continuously multiplying. Uh, now, you can also have the opposite. You can have 1, 1 third, 1 ninth, 1 over 27, 1 over 81. So here, what you're seeing is that you have a constant multiple still, but you kind of have a division of 3. So you're dividing by 3, or another way that you can think about it is multiplying it by a factor of 1 third. So that's what's, uh, this is also called the common ratio. So that's basically what a geometric uh, sequence is. So you have multiplication and division. So just like how we had it before, what we want to try to do is come up with an equation that will give us a general form for the geometric sequence. Okay, so you start off with A1, the first term. In order for me to get A2, you're going to take A1 and multiply it by a common number. We're going to call that common number R. Okay, so R is what we're going to call the common ratio. Just like common difference was D, common ratio is going to be R. So how do I get the third term? So the third term is basically taking the second one and multiplying it by R. Now notice that A2 is just equal to A1 times R. So you're going to have A1 times R, and then you're going to have another R. That's going to give me A1 R squared. So then if you wanted to figure out what A4 was, that's just going to be A3 times R. We know what A3 is. A3 is just going to be the previous one, which is just A1 times R squared. And then you have another R. That's going to give me A1 times R cubed. So you can already see that there is some sort of a pattern here. So can you guess what A5 is going to be? Yeah, that one's going to be A1 r to the fourth. So just how we kind of had this n minus 1 factor, we're going to have it here too. So the general term for a geometric sequence is going to be a1, or you can just call it a, um, r to the power of n minus 1. So this guy is going to be the general term for a geometric um, sequence. Okay. So now let's do a couple of examples. Okay, so find the fifth term of the geometric sequence. Okay, so let's say uh, we had three, uh, then we had uh, uh, let's say we had 6 and then we had 12 okay so I know this is really silly because you can literally just do it <laughs> but let's just go ahead and just find uh, the fifth term using uh, the formula just so that we can practice so let's say uh, in this case, we know that this is geometric. What is going to be the common ratio R? Well, a way that you can do it is taking the second term and dividing it by the first term. That's a really quick and easy way to do it. So just, you're going to have 6 divided by 3. That's going to give me a 2. We know what A1 is. A1 is just going to be 3. So the way that we're going to write it is A sub n is equal to A1, which is 3. R in this case is 2 and to the power of n minus 1. So now if you wanted to find the fifth term, all you got to do is plug in 5 for n. So you're going to have 3, 2, 5 minus 1. That's going to give me 3 times 2 to the power of 4. 
So now all we got to do is just put this in our calculator. So 3 times 2 to the power of 4 is just going to give me 48. Okay, so of course you could have just multiplied it out and you would have gotten the same thing. Okay. Alrighty. So let's do another problem. So let's say we had um, find... Uh, uh, find the general formula. So let's say we ended up with a2 equals 2 and then a5 equals 54. Okay, do you feel like you can try this out? I'm going to do the same thing that we did before because I don't know what the value of R is and I don't know what the value of of, um, of A1 is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with what I have. So A2 equals 2. So I'm going to use the formula A sub n equals A1 R to the n minus 1. So I know that n in this case is equal to 2. So A2 is equal to A1. R we don't know what that is but I have 2 minus 1 there. A2 in this case is equal to 2, is equal to A1, and R to the first power. Okay, so that's basically all I have. Now for A5, this equals 54. I'm going to do the same thing. A sub n is equal to A1, R to the n minus 1. I'm going to plug in the 5. So you're going to have A1, R to the n minus 1. Oops, sorry, 5 minus 1. Oops. So you're going to take A5, which is equal to 54, is equal to A1, R to the fourth. Okay. So similar to how we did it with conics, with the parabolas, we're going to do the same trick. We're going to divide each out. You can always solve for one. That's another way that you could do it. A1, R. So the A1s are going to cancel out. So I'm going to take 54 divided by 2, and that's going to give me 27, is equal to r to the third power. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, how do we solve for that? Well, we got to take the cubed root. So the cubed root of 27 is just going to give me 3. So r is equal to 3 in this case. So the general formula, uh, well, we're not done yet because we need to figure out what a1 is. I'm going to plug it over there. So 2 equals a1 times 3. We're going to divide this by 3. So a1 equals 2 thirds. So now that we have that, we can now figure out what the general formula is going to be. So we're going to have a sub n. It's going to be equal to a1 r to the n minus 1. So a sub n equals 2 thirds times r, which is 3, to the n minus 1. This is going to be my solution. Okay, cool. All right, so now that we have that one, uh, now let's go ahead and try out uh, partial sums. Okay, so let's say we have, um, so geometric sums. Geometric series, and we're going to call this partial sums. Okay, so similar to uh, a sum of uh, arithmetic s sequences, you can also have a sum of arithmet of geometric se sequences all the way until I get to the nth term. So the sum, the partial sum of the first n, um, n uh, geometric sequences is going to be a times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. This proof is in the book. You can look at it if you'd like. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do uh, this particular problem. So let's say uh, what I wanted to do was the following. So find the sum of the first uh, eight terms. Okay, so one plus four plus 16, and then continues on. 
and this is geometric by the way. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do is let's write down the formula. So in the formula it says that S sub n is equal to A, oh, this A just means A1. You sometimes see it as just A, one minus R to the N over one minus R. A1 is easy, A1 is just equal to one. R in this case, we can just take the second one divided by the first one and you see that you get four. So everything is being multiplied by a factor of four. And here N, we want the first eighth terms. So it's gonna be eight. So now let's plug everything in there. So you're gonna have S sub eight equals one times one minus four to the power of eight divided by one minus uh, four. Okay, so this is gonna be a ginormous number. So one minus four to the power of eight divided by one minus four. And what I'm gonna get is 21,845. So it's a huge number. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because you see that this number is increasing. So you should expect the sum to just um, increase as well. But is that also true if the sequence or the sum is decreasing? So what happens when you're looking at infinite series? Okay, so let's say you want to find out what happens when n goes to infinity, okay, and r, absolute value of r, is less than 1, okay? So the first thing that you kind of want to think about when you do these types of problems is that, well, what happens when r is, absolute value of r is greater than one? So basically the common ratio is something that's greater than one, like two, three, four, five. Well, what's gonna happen is that the sum is gonna get bigger and bigger. See how here r was equal to four? And this sum got ginormous. So when r is greater than one, what's gonna happen is that the sum is going to be big. And usually what we say is that the sum is either gonna go to positive infinity or negative infinity, depending on how big it gets and what the sign is. So usually when something gets really big, we call it that the sum is diverging. So it diverges, that's what we say. And that usually happens when R is greater than one. Now the thing is, is what happens when r, the absolute value of r, is less than 1, okay? So when it's less than 1, what we say, the sum is going to be small, and I'm going to explain it to you why. And it's going to converge to a particular number. So if I take an infinite number of numbers, it's, and r is less than 1, you're gonna get to a to a really close number. So you're gonna converge to somewhere. Now, what? why does that matter? Well, let's say r was equal to 1 half. So let's look at the formula, S sub n. So you're gonna do a1, one minus r to the n, divided by one minus r. Now let's not even worry about what a sub n, a sub one should be. We're gonna plug in one half to the power of n one minus one half. Now what's gonna happen when n gets really large? So as n goes to infinity. So what is the sum of an infinite number going to be? Well, why don't you try plugging in many different numbers for one half? So why don't you do one half to the 10, then do one half uh, to the 100, one half to one, the 1000. So where is this number headed to? So put it in your calculator and try to figure out what you get. So if you put one half um, and then you put it, raise it to the power of 10, you get 0 0.0009. What happens when you take one half and you put it to the power of now 100? What you're gonna end up getting is 7.89 times 10 to the negative 31. What happens if you take one half and raise it to the power of 1,000? Well, you're, what you're gonna get is about zero. So notice that this guy is the odd one, but that basically means that you have 31 zeros right before you get to the 789. So this means that as this, as n is getting really, really big, 
this guy is going to zero. So basically, you're kind of getting rid of this turn. So all that I'm left with, if R really is less than or uh, less than one, then you can add an infinite number of numbers by taking, okay, so this is gonna go to zero. So you just have A1 times one, which gives me A1. We're gonna divide this by one minus R. This is the formula for an infinite amount of numbers. Okay, so you can find, so you can find the sum of an infinite series as long as the absolute value of R is less than one. That would mean that this is going to converge. Sometimes what we call it is we call it the limit, um, but this is basically what it what it's talking about. So let's just do a very quick example. So example. Does the series, or does the geometric, which is right, the infinite, geometric series converge? If it does, find the sum. Okay, so let's say we had one, one fourth, Oops, that's wrong. Let me let me rewrite this. Let's say we had five, one, one fifth, and then it continues on. So first, let's try to figure out if this is going to converge or not. Well, how do we know if this is converges? Well, that means that this geometric series has to have a value of r that's less than one. Well, what is r in this case? Well, r you can write a two divided by a one. It's going to be 1 over 5. So 1 fifth, absolute value of 1 fifth, clearly is less than 1. So this means that this is going to converge. Okay. So now what we got to do is figure out what the sum is. So S sub infinity is going to be equal to A1 over 1 minus R. So we can use this formula. A1 in this case is going to be this 5 divided by 1 minus R. That's just 1 fifth. So let's put this in our formula are in the calculator 1 divided by 1 minus 1 fifth and that's going to give me 25 over 4 and which is basically well not approximately it equals 6.25 which basically means that this series if I continue going on and I continue adding it I'm going to get closer and closer to 6.25 it's not going to go to infinity it's going to get closer and closer to this sum which is pretty pretty cool